Hello everyone, welcome to day 38th of December Lead Code Challenge and today's question is Game of Life. Hope you are enjoying the Lead Code daily challenges. And uh, let's look at today's question. Uh, the question says you are given a grid of M cross N size and each cell has two possible states. One is zero, that means the cell is alive and other is zero, that means the cell is dead. Uh, you need to generate the next state of the complete grid uh, and there are few rules that are specified here. Uh, any cell that has fewer than eight, uh, fewer than two live neighbors uh, dies becomes zero due to underpopulation. Any live cell with two or more uh, live neighbors uh, move on to the next generation. Uh, any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies because of overpopulation. And any dead cells with exactly three live neighbors uh, becomes active uh, as a process of reproduction. So these are the few ru few four rules that are specified here and we need to tell what will be the next state of our grid. So without any uh, much ado, let's look at the algorithm. Also uh, there is an important point here, while considering the neighbors you need to consider eight possible neighbors, not the four, uh, like not the immediate ones but also on the diagonal uh, positions as well. So let's uh, walk through the algorithm now. Starting the slideshow, taking a pen here. And let's understand the problem. So in, in this, we are given a grid uh, and the grid has two states, live and active. Uh, one uh, Alive means one, zero is represent, zero represents dead. And uh, how do we calculate uh, the neighbors? Uh, uh, neighbors? We will consider eight possible positions for this as represented in green so the for for the grid that is represented by red here it has eight possible neighbors so each grid can have maximum of eight neighbor eight neighbors uh, and those and those at the boundaries will have obviously less neighbors so uh, let's understand the transition rules uh, out of those four rules that were specified i have i have reduced them on only to two rules uh, if a cell is alive and has fewer than or greater than three active neighbors, then it will die and become zero. So there was a rule specified. There were multiple rules specified. I have converged few of them and this is these are the rules that are of area of our interest. If a cell is alive, that means it's active and has fewer than or greater than three active neighbors, it will become, de it will become dead and uh, the value it will store will be zero. If there's a dead cell and has three active neighbors, then it will come get back to life and its value will become one. How do we solve this question? Uh, the naive approach would be create a new matrix and store the number of active neighbors for each cell. Apply those two rules that are specified here uh, that I stated here and update uh, the board state for each cell and you can reach the next state of the complete matrix. What would be the time complexity of this algorithm? Uh, one uh, one operation that you would perform would be calculating uh, the active neighbors for each cell, and other operation would be uh, would be updating the new state uh, depending upon the uh, neighbors calculated in the previous step. So the time complexity would be order of n square uh, n into m, uh, uh, where uh, n represents uh, number of uh, rows and m represents number of columns. Similarly, uh, the space complexity here would be of uh, equivalent value because you have created a new matrix for storing the numbers of active neighbors. Can we do better than this in constant time? Yes, we can obviously do. So let's just tweak uh, the algorithm uh, and reach do, do the complete step in constant time. How can we do this? Uh, we represent we can represent the node uh, that has fewer than two active or greater than three active neighbors as minus two. We will represent a live node that has fewer than two active or greater than three active neighbors as minus two. So I, what I'm doing is I'm doing a masking kind of operation where I'll uh, update the representation and so that I can, I know what was the previous state and I know what is the next state in which the cell will go. So minus two means that the current, the node is presently alive 
एंड हैज फ्यूअर देन टू एक्टिव और ग्रेटर देन थ्री एक्टिव नेबर्स वी विल रिप्रेजेंट अ डेड नोड विल रिप्रेजेंट अ डेड नोड दैट हैज थ्री एक्टिव नेबर्स विद माइनस वन सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस ग्रिड इन द ब्रैकेट्स द नंबर ऑफ एक्टिव नोड्स आर मैंशन एंड आई हैव कैलकुलेटेड द एक्टिव नंबर ऑफ नोड्स एंड I'll I'll I have updated the value to wherever as per these two rules, wherever I found uh, an active node with fewer than uh, two uh, active nodes or greater than three active neighbors as minus two. So these were the two contenders. And for the second, as per the second rule, uh, for the red node that has three active neighbors, I I updated it with minus one. So these were the two ones. Once we have once we have updated this logic, we'll replace minus one with zero, or minus two with zero, because they eventually uh, that node should die, and we'll represent minus one with one because eventually that node should become active. So let's quickly code this up, and uh, what advantage we have got using this approach? We we have we are updating uh, the board itself, uh, so we don't need any extra space. The space complexity reduces to order of one. That is constant time. Moving on to the coding part now. Defining a private variable that will help us identify in what all directions we need to move. So defining private variable of two dimension directions that is equal to New int, and it will have eight possible values. So it's zero comma one, then one comma zero, then minus one comma zero, then zero comma minus one. So that's it for up, down, right, bottom, right, left. Uh, and now for the four diagonal possibilities, minus one comma minus one, minus one comma one. One comma minus one, and one comma one. The last one is one comma one. So we know for each index we need to move in these eight directions. And let's try and code this up. For integer i equals to zero, i is less than four dot length, i plus plus. For integer j equals to zero, j is less than four. the for the number of columns in the matrix and let's calculate uh let's check if the board is alive or not if board is in in live state if it is then we will calculate its neighbors active neighbors get Active neighbors, so we'll define this method, and what we'll pass, we'll pass board, we'll pass the index whose active neighbors we want to identify. If the number of active neighbors is less than two, or Number of active neighbors is greater than three. That means underpopulation, and this means overpopulation. We will update the board uh, to minus two value. So this minus two represents that the current state of board is alive, and it has less than two or greater than three active neighbors. We'll update. We have to update this to zero in future. Else, let's check if. Board of i comma j is zero. That means uh, the board is in dead state. Uh, what we will check? We will calculate the active neighbors again. And if uh, if the active neighbors if the active neighbors is equal equal to three, as per our second rule that I stated in the presentation, we will update it to minus one. Here minus one represents that the board will eventually turn live, active. Like the cell will actually actually is intended to become live in the next state. Will become active. 
However, the current value is zero. This is also very important. Will become active in next state. Once we are done with this, we will simply update the board and we'll return from there. So we'll pass board to it. And let's write the update function first. Void update board. What are we gonna do? We'll pass the board and we'll simply write the two for loops i is less than board dot length i plus plus for integer j equals to zero j is less than board of zero dot length j plus plus if board of i comma j equals to minus two that means uh, it has to be turned zero because that was the intended state uh, fu intended future state if board dot i comma j is minus one that is it has to turn alive it has to uh, be active and update the state to one let's write another method for calculating the number of active neighbors what should be the parameters here one will be the board one will be the starting row, other will be the column index. And uh, let's just count act active numbers, active neighbors in a variable. Let's move in all four directions. Direction, let's iterate through the directions loop, array, directions array, and let's calculate the new so new row equals to row plus direction dot zero standard way of iterating and let's do it for similar thing for column new column if new row is within the bounds that means greater than zero and new row is less than a uh, board dot length similarly new column is greater than or equal to zero and new call is less than or equal to board dot zero dot length if it is within the boundary of the grid we will check whether board state is active that means the current cell is active uh, how, how will we check uh, we have two variables for this one is one obviously and other one is board of i comma j oh not board of i comma j but new row it has to be new row comma new column if board of new row comma new column is equal to minus two because minus two means that the board is in active state but the future intended state of the board is zero. Once we are done with this, we will increment the active neighbors. And we will return the number of active neighbors. Let's just sum it this up. New column, I left one typo. Where is this coming from? Oh, this should not be there. So equal to sign was a typo. It looks great now. Let's submit it. Accepted. I'll just talk about the time complexity of the approach. The time complexity of the approach would be 
order of n cross m uh, where n are number of rows and m are number of columns uh, because once you are updating some uh, moving the uh, board to a transitory state and then again you are updating the board uh, uh, with the natural states final states uh, so you are doing it twice uh, that means the time complexity is still equal to order of n cross m space complexity is constant because we are only operating on the board and we are not using any extra space thanks for watching the video